everyone today in this class we are going to discuss our new topic <coughs> from the chapter motion in two dimension and that is the uniform circular motion students uh, as we have discussed in projectile motion that is a type of a motion in a plane because to describe the projectile motion the position of any body at any position there is a requirement of x axis as well as y axis that's why we call this motion in two dimension because here to locate a body x and y axis both are required similarly if we a body perform a circular motion suppose a body is performing a circular motion and the center at the origin <coughs> then friends we can see the body can be located by using x axis and y axis because both the axis are required to locate the position of this body then here we are going to start the uniform circular motion and uniform circular motion students because here the word uniform we are using uniform word is because whenever a body perform a circular motion with constant speed i repeat again when a body perform a circular motion with constant speed then its motion is said to be uniform circular motion in this uh, syllabus of class 11th students we will discuss two types of circular motion one is a circular motion in a horizontal plane and another is a circular motion in vertical plane then in vertical the uniform circular motion we will discuss in a chapter work for energy but uh, in this chapter we are discussing the circular motion in a horizontal plane uh, students here as we can see to describe the position of a body to locate the position of a body in a circular path to locate the position of a body in circular path we require both x axis and y axis but since for mathematical simplicity the best way to describe the position of a body is the angle Isn't suppose if I say that the body is making an angle of 60 degree from the horizon. Suppose the body is at an angle of 60 degree. Then you can imagine the position of the body. Suppose I say the body is at an angle of 90 degree from the horizon. Then you can imagine that the body is here because our body is at an angle of 90 degree. Similarly, suppose if I say the body is at an angle of 180 degree. then you will imagine that the body is at this position suppose the body is at an angle of 270 degree then you will say that the now the body has completed the 270 degree means angle is the best way to describe the position of a body in uniform circular motion or any type of circular motion you students here as suppose i am starting to walk for 10 meters then you will say that the my position or my displacement is 10 meter from my origin then here what we are doing in linear motion we are using distance as a position to describe the position and here in the circular motion we are taking angle to describe the position that's why in our circular motion there will be a important term theta theta this angle theta and this theta is called angular displacement when a body body completes certain angle theta when a body takes uh, a displacement of theta angle then to describe the position of a body we are using here angle and that's why we are calling it the angular displacement i repeat again because here we are describing the same position and any location of a body by the angle that's why we are calling it angular displacement similarly students when our body is going on straight path then we define a term velocity velocity is equal to displacement of body means how the displacement is changing with respect to the time similarly 
देयर मे बी वेरिएशन इन द एंगल सपोज अ बॉडी इज परफॉर्मिंग अ सर्कुलर मोशन विद अ वेरी स्लो स्पीड देन विल से दैट द एंगल इज चेंजिंग स्लोली सपोज द बॉडी इज कंप्लीटिंग द पाथ वेरी फास्ट देन विल से दैट एंगल इज चेंजिंग क्विकली देन द चेंज इन एंगल मे टेक्स प्लेस अकॉर्डिंग टू द स्पीड ऑफ द बॉडी देन वी आर यूजिंग अ टर्म एंगुलर वेलोसिटी Here we are using a term angular velocity that is denoted by the symbol omega, not w. This is omega, and omega is called angle of our time. Just like we have studied, velocity is equal to displacement of our time. Since there the position is described by the displacement, here the position is described by the angle. Then we will say that angular velocity is equal to angle of our time. What is the unit of angular displacement? Students here have studied. This is the radian. The angular unit of angle is radian. And what will be the unit of angular velocity? That will be the radian per second. Now, students, one more term. As we have studied that there is a linear acceleration. Acceleration means we have studied that acceleration means change in velocity upon time. Like v minus u by t. Similarly, here also there will be the change in angular velocity. Then we can say here the angular acceleration. This this is called the angular velocity. Angular velocity. Similarly, we are going to describe the angular acceleration that is denoted by the alpha. And acceleration, linear acceleration is denoted by the a. Then angular acceleration. Will be described by the change in angular velocity upon time frame. The unit will be radian per second. You just I repeat again. There is no need to worry because all the things are just similar to the terms used in the motion in a straight line. There was a length, and here at the place of length we are describing the angle. And the angle is called angular displacement. There was the velocity displacement upon time because the velocity displacement was going to be changed with the time. Here, angle is changing. That's why we are using angular velocity, angle upon time. There was acceleration was defined as change in velocity upon time. Here, angular acceleration is defined as change in angular velocity upon time. And its unit is radian per second square. Now, students, there is a new term, or you can say there is a term, linear velocity, which we are going to describe in this circular motion. Students, as the angle is going to be changed, you can also see that the body is completing certain distance also. Means body is moving in a straight line also, or you can say in uh, it is covering a path also. Then. Here, linear velocity will also be there. Whenever a body perform a circular motion, we have studied in class ninth. In circular motion, a body has a velocity which is linear velocity, and its direction is towards the direction of tangent. Suppose the body is now here, then its linear velocity is denoted by v. And its direction is towards the direction of tangent. Suppose now the point is here, then again the velocity will be the direction of tangent. And tangent also makes an angle of 90 degree with the radius, where r is the radius of the circle. In this sense, you can see that the linear velocity is tangent tangential direction, and that's why we call. in uniform circular motion speed is constant but velocity is always changing in uniform circular motion speed is constant because a body is revolving with a constant speed but its direction is changing so velocity is a vector quantity and a vector quantity has both magnitude and direction but its magnitude is not changing only direction is changing that's why you will never say that velocity is constant because the direction of velocity is continuously changing you can see at the distance the velocity is in this direction 
after some time it is in the downward direction after some time it will be in the upward direction since the direction of velocity is changing that's why we call that in uniform circular motion the speed of body is constant but velocity is continuously changing and the direction of velocity is towards the direction of tension okay <coughs> now students we are going to derive a relation between linear velocity and angular velocity we are going to derive a relation between linear velocity and angular velocity students in this relation between the angular velocity and linear velocity will find the relation between omega and suppose a body is performing a uniform circular motion with center at o and the body has a initial position at a and after a small time interval dt after a small time interval dt the body has new position a dash and suppose in time interval dt the angle covered is d theta the students here we are considering a very small time interval which is denoted by the d in time d let angular displacement is d theta and suppose in time dt the angular displacement is d theta students suppose this time interval is very small and if we consider for a circle it's a small circumference if in a circle you consider it's a small circumference then what you will get it will be approximately straight line it will be approximately straight line then suppose in a small interval d the body has a linear displacement approximately of x and angular displacement is d theta then students as we know that omega is equal to theta by t as we have discussed now omega is equal to theta by t where omega is the what is the omega where omega is the or where omega is the angular velocity theta is the angular displacement and t is the diameter similarly in class uh, 11th in chapter number 2 units and measurement students we have studied there are two supplementary units there are two supplementary units suppose this is a segment which is subtending which is a arc which is subtending an angle of theta and this is the radius r and suppose this angle is x this distance is x then we have discussed in class chapter number 2 that the formula angle is equal to r upon radius x by r we are going to use this apply this formula angle is equal to r upon radius and its unit is radian then we are going to apply this formula here angle is equal to r upon radius <coughs> what we will get it is angle here is d theta and r is x and suppose the path of radius of this path is r r upon radius angle is equal to r upon radius after substituting students we want to find the relation between angular velocity and linear velocity and for velocity there should be the time then what we will do we will divide the both side with the time or you can say we are going to differentiate with respect to the time then differentiate with respect to time differentiate with respect to the time what you will get d theta by d is equal to r is a constant you will get dx by d we have divided the both or we have differentiated the both side then this is the d theta by dt this is the r is a constant then the remaining term is x and differentiate with the time dt dx by dt then what you will get here you will get d theta by dt angle upon time we have studied now theta 
omega is equal to theta by t. Means angle upon time is called angular velocity, and that is one by r. And dx by dt, displacement upon time. As we have observed, x by dt is equal to v, then dx by dt is equal to v. Then what is the result? The result is omega is equal to v by r, or you can write v is equal to r omega. V is equal to r omega. <coughs> Students here, v is a velocity. It's a vector quantity. R is the radius. You can see the radius has its direction. Continuously, the there is change in the direction of it. The radius is also a vector quantity. Omega is also a vector quantity. Then you can write it in the vector form. V is equal to omega cross R. We have been discussed in the topic vectors. There are two types of vector product: scalar product and vector product. When the product of two vector quantities a vector quantity that is called the vector product and then the cross is called omega cross r and its direction can be determined using the right hand screw rule. That is it. This is v is equal to r omega is the relation between linear velocity and angular velocity. Now we are going to find one more relation in this video and that is the relation between linear acceleration and angular acceleration okay now let us derive the relation between angular acceleration and linear acceleration okay, students in this relation we are going to use this formula which we have derived v is equal to r omega v is equal to r omega differentiate both the side with respect to the time differentiate both the side with respect to the time what you will get you will get dv by dt the v is the linear velocity again r is a constant and you will get d omega by dt what happens dv by dt change in linear velocity upon time is called linear acceleration and this r is a constant d omega by dt means change in angular velocity A is equal to R alpha. Means compare these two relations. Whenever you multiply angular velocity to be the radius, you will get linear velocity. Whenever you multiply angular acceleration with the radius, you will get the linear acceleration. Then this is that's all for today, students. And in our next class, we'll derive a most important relation, or you can say we'll find the result of centripetal acceleration. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much.